Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson, and I'm here to guide you in everything you need to know about gemstones. Today, I'm here to tell you about one of the most important treatments that you need to know about if you're dealing with sapphires or rubies. Many of you have asked me about this treatment, and it is the lead glass filling. Sometimes just people call it glass filled, or if you're not used to the Thai accent, you might hear Garfield. Don't be confused, this is not the lasagna loving cat. In fact, what I've got here are several pieces of large glass filled rubies still in their original crystal shapes. Many rubies come out of the earth looking like tabular hexagonal crystals. So I've got five pieces of these glass filled rubies in my hand. And as you look at the surface, you'll notice that there are actually some triangular shapes over the face of the crystal. And this happens because of the formation of the natural crystals in the earth. Glass filled rubies and sapphires are typically made with natural ruby crystals. But the material that they begin with is typically opaque and it looks like, you know, aquarium gravel. But they found once they put glass inside of the crystal by heating the crystals with glass powder, the glass would melt far before the crystals would and it would seep into those fissures and fill them. Now, what's the point of this? This improves the clarity of the crystal a lot. And so the original color of those crystals can come out. You can use crystals that would otherwise be useless for anything but aquarium gravel and turn it into a beautiful gemstone. A lot of these glass filled rubies in large sizes, honestly, they look like candy. Don't bite on them, corundum is very hard. Because the refractive index of glass is higher than the refractive index of air, then those cracks are much less visible once they're filled with glass. It's called lead glass because typically they used lead inside of the glass, just like the crystal drinking ware that people have at their fancy parties. Now we call it lead glass filling, but it's important to note there are other metals that can be used in glass filling, such as bismuth but it's a lot like how Americans call tissues Kleenex, even though they're not all Kleenex brand, lead brand. To my understanding, that lead also improves the refractive index to make it higher and make it less distinctive from the original corundum. It's still not going to be the same as the corundum, so if you look at cut pieces of lead glass, if you reflect it in the light, sometimes you can see a crack and it'll have a different luster. It'll be a much more dull gray luster because the refractive index of the glass is much lower than the refractive index of the corundum. So corundum will appear very bright and white and then you'll find these areas that look more like gray rivers. That's one of the ways that we identify a lead glass filled stone. There are two other ways that I would like to talk about in identifying lead glass filled and that is bubbles. A lot of times when the lead glass is seeping into those fissures in the ruby or sapphire crystal, it will trap air. And so you'll be able to see rounded bubbles. And that is something you will be able to notice with a loop. The bubbles are oftentimes large in size and they're a more spherical shape than any other inclusions that you would find in natural crystals. There are types of natural glass that will have the same type of bubbles, but that's a different question. If you suspect that this is ruby and possibly glass filled ruby, then we're looking for those bubbles. If you can find those bubbles in combination with those different areas of luster that I was talking about, you can also look for one more thing. Again, we have to remember that corundum and glass have two different refractive indices. And so if you turn the stone in the right directions, in the right lighting environments, you may be able to see that those fissures actually have what we call a blue or an orange flash. So as the stone is rotated a little bit, if the light catches those seams of glass, sometimes they will flash blue. So if you can find these three pieces of evidence, the blue flash, the bubbles trapped in the glass, and then the different luster on the surface of the stone, then that is exceptional evidence that this is a glass filled stone. And that is very, very important because glass filled stones are incredibly, incredibly cheap. If you're buying in wholesale, they can be cents on the dollar. Whereas a natural ruby in anywhere near a comparable size would easily be thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. And if it's a nice color and nice clarity, if it's natural and unheated ruby, you could be talking hundreds of thousands or more. Remember, the most expensive stone sold to date is a ruby, and it was millions per carat. So whether we're talking about millions, hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands, thousands, or even hundreds, if you're buying a lead glass stone that could be cents on the dollar per carat, obviously that's a huge contrast in an area of fraud. And all three of these pieces of evidence can be seen with a loop. So make sure that you practice it. And if you don't know how, please check out this video. Now these crystals are very interesting to me. These are a friend of mine. So if you're interested in getting large glass filled rubies, then just let me know and I can put you in contact with them. But these crystals show that the original crystal is in that hexagonal shape, which I find very interesting. You may notice that the Gem Shepherd logo includes a hexagon and that's because the crystal shape of many precious colored stones are hexagons. They come out of the earth looking like this. Now, many ruby crystals are in fact tabular, and so you'll find that they are quite thin. So even though they have a huge face, it's difficult to get a stone with nice depth. 
And this is rubies, huh? Aquamarine and emerald and a bunch of other stones that also have hexagonal crystal shapes can also be very deep. So their cutting challenges are quite different. But these rubies, if you look at the surface, you'll see that it looks like it's covered in sugar, and that's the lead glass. What they do is they take the original crystals, which probably look quite opaque, and they put them together in a crucible. That's basically a container that can withstand a lot of heat. And then they put the glass powder in with these crystals, and they put them inside of a furnace. They heat that up, and the glass can seep into the cracks of the crystal. They let it cool down, and then they break them apart. Some people may be a little bit more gentle using acids, or maybe they use a saw, etc., etc. I'm not into cutting, so I don't know all the details. You can ask those people. But once they've got them like this, they can just cut it like a normal gemstone. Because effectively, it is a normal gemstone. It's just heavily treated, which is why they're so cheap. These candy-like gems can absolutely be beautiful, and you're not gonna be able to find a natural ruby in this size, especially in the average person's budget. Many people will go their entire life without seeing a ruby in this size. So there's definitely a place for glass-filled rubies, just not in my hands. One other thing that's very important to note, and this will help you if you're buying stones online, there are many glass-filled rubies and sapphires that can also be doped with other colors. The glass is not just clear glass. Sometimes they will also mix in other pigments. So you can take an ugly stone that looks mostly white, put cobalt in it, and that, when it seeps into the stone, will make the stone look blue. So you can have a sapphire this big, but it's a lead glass filled sapphire. Same thing with rubies. They could put chromium or perhaps some other elements and color the stone red. Now these colors are stable. They're not going to wash out if you put it in a cup of water, but it's still an artificial color. It's not the same as the original crystal. These stones right here do not have any additional colors in the glass, so the glass just improves the overall transparency of the crystal itself. Does that make it much more valuable? No. But frankly, if I'm going to have to choose between one that has color enhancement, or if I have to choose between another ruby that's been clarity enhanced, if you want to make a euphemism, then I'm going to just choose clarity enhanced as opposed to color enhanced as well. Makes me feel better. So by way of a quick review, three pieces of evidence that you can see with a loop, if you are experienced with using them, are gas bubbles, differences in luster on the surface of the stone, and a blue flash following along the fissures inside of the stone. If you can get experience doing those things, you will recognize glass-filled rubies and sapphires so fast, and then you may even start running in the opposite direction yelling, unclean, unclean. I'm past that phase. At this stage in history, glass filling is a well-known and easily detectable treatment, and it's pretty much only done on corundum. I haven't heard of it being done with any other stones, though there are other stones that you could theoretically do it to. But what's the advantage of such a heavy treatment on other materials? Not much. I think that's why they don't do it. But with corundum, there are a lot of lousy crystals that do improve a lot when they're treated in such a cheap way. And one more important note on the stability of lead glass filled gemstones. If you are using these in jewelry, if it's on a pendant, then you have no issues. If it's on a ring, do be aware that there are certain substances that can eat away at the glass. Even some of the agents in hand soap or dishwashing soap can eat away at the glass and over time dull the appearance of your stone. So if you are buying lead glass filled rubies and sapphires, please do be aware. If you're gonna be washing dishes or anything like that, make sure you take these off and put them in a dry place so that they're not getting eaten by your detergents. And certainly don't go trying to clean your own jewelry by putting it in chlorine or whatever else. That's going to destroy the glass as well. Bad idea. If you'd like to explore more about gemstones, then head on over to gemshepherd.com. You can also get in touch with me directly through that website. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, tell all of your friends about me, leave me a comment down below if you so desire. And until next time, I'll say bye-bye.